Well, it's finally here. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, and Dave, this one's for you, and uh, CMF1606, who uh, also commented on, on this video before it happened. Anyway, uh, time travel is amazing. So, uh, I want to do a video on part of my comic collection, which is The Eagle. Now, The Eagle was a British comic that was started in I think 1950 um, and it's an ori and it's original run it lasted until 1969 and then it was started up again in 1982 and lasted until 1994 now it's that second era which I'm most interested in uh, because that was the era where you know well late 80s early 90s was when I was buying the Eagle comic so Recently what happened is I found a uh, I found a box full of old comics that I had and I thought, you know, I really should start looking after these. Um, and it sort of got me into the idea of collecting them again. Um, sort of, because I, I haven't looked after a lot of my stuff when I was a kid, so there's certain things I've been buying on eBay to sort of replace the things that I loved uh, that... I just carried around with me and they got torn or ripped or <clears throat> broken but um, looking through the Eagle comics again it's like I just forgot how great you know you know these um, actually were and um, so I went on and I bought a few of them some of these are my own as well the ones that uh, were still left over from my Eagle collection when I was a kid there may be a box somewhere um, somewhere else where there may be more of these uh, but anyway if you don't know what Eagle Comic is um, like I say it, it was it was basically it was it was published by IPC and it was uh, a contemporary of 2000 AD so you got a lot of uh, like science fiction stories and some horror as well um, because we'll, we'll get on to that in a, in a moment but you know, I, I loved writing stories when I was a kid, and I still do. I still send off short stories to like yeah, short story competitions and things like that. And um, a lot of what I loved about short stories, I actually discovered through the Eagle, because they used to do this like, one-off science fiction story every week, and um, even if they were just a few pages long, they were absolutely fantastic and absolutely brilliant. So. Let's go a little bit, I don't get attacked for these, let's go a little bit more in depth for these. So here we are on the couch, ooh, it went all Dr. Rations. Um, so, uh, just to take a quicker look, uh, a quicker look, a closer look even, at uh, my Eagle Comics. Um, let us say, they published them until 1994. Now, there's actually a good cross section of uh, comics here, I'll just try and lay them out. Um, like representing the different styles that they went through while they were uh, over the throughout the 80s and early 90s because they did change if you look at these ones here and this is like quite an early one um, and this <coughs> is when is this 1984 um, so that these are like the ones that I sort of bought off uh, off the net now if you look at these you'll see that they're actually pulp comics, they're printed on pulp paper, they're printed on uh, the same sort of paper that newspaper is, which is really amazing that they, they survive. I, I kind of like that, um, I don't know, it gives off a certain nostalgic smell, but anyway, so that's the sort of early ones, and then we moved on through a bunch here to these ones which were a little bit later, sort of 1986, 1987 I think. Um, and you know some of the artwork on these is awesome um, these start to look more oh no this is a wheat bix uh, <laughs> these start to look more like modern comics and sort of more of a sort of quality product if you actually look inside um, excuse me I'll do this if you actually look inside if I can get this off. 
um, you'll see that it's still black and white in a lot of these. Um, but you know, there's some really, really great artwork and some brilliant, brilliant stories. Um, now, the Eagle was kind of an originally like a sort of boy's own sort of type uh, comic when it was first released, I think. Uh, so it had a lot of like uh, war stories and things like that. And as time went on, eventually. You know what, I'll put that back later. Um, as time went on, eventually it became heavily sort of science fiction based. And um, if you actually see here, you'll see that the, the eagle actually uh, assimilated certain comics. If we look here, now this one's for CMF 1606 because we were talking about Scream. Now, Scream, you can see there, eagle and Scream. Uh, Scream comic was a comic that was produced in the early 80s and it only had 15 issues, uh, but it was brilliant. It was really, really great. I got some later issues and there were some specials done over the years, which I picked up. I'll do another video on them at some point. But this is when the Eagle actually assimilated Scream because Scream, although only ran for 15 issues, it was actually pretty grim. And because of that, uh, there was a bit of backlash towards it. Um, so what happened is that the, the eagle actually uh, assimilated some of the more popular stories. So for a while it would be called, like, this one's eagle and screen. I know people that are comic collectors are going to be like cringing right now as I do this with one hand. Ooh, there misses. Right. So if you look at this one, so, yeah. uh, so this is Scream, and you can see a sort of gruesome skeleton-like creature which makes you think that it's Scream. Now, Doom Lord was one of the more popular uh, comic strips. It was about an alien who was originally sent to Earth to like, judge uh, Earth and eventually ends up protecting it. Uh, it's quite sort of like environmentally conscious. Um, Blood Fang, remember that. But if we go through this, we should see. This is quite good. I love all the old adverts that you get. I mean, there's like the ABC Warriors from 2000 AD. <laughs> the Six Million Dollar Man. Um, and also, there's like computer game stuff as well. Like, what's that? That's uh, Commodore 64. Uh, you know, I just, I just love the nostalgia of all this sort of stuff. Um, so there you go, there's one monster, I think that was from Scream. Uh, man oh, I can't even pronounce that, Manix. Uh, wow. Um, there you go, this is the most famous story from... Uh, Scream, which ended up in the Eagle and actually ran for years, it's called The 13th Floor, um, which kind of takes place in this one building and uh, it's, it's very, very good. Um, I used to really enjoy, really used to really enjoy this one, but some of the, the artwork's really, really, really good, even though it's sort of black and white. Uh, and then colour, just to correct what I was saying there. So after a while, eventually what would happen is that the the name alongside like that one with Scream would get dropped and it would just return back to the uh, to Eagle. Um, but what you can see here is like uh, the Ghastly McNasty, who is uh, the sort of Tales from the Crypt keeper type character of Scream, who uh, would tell the stories, is actually in Eagle now. So. Let's see if there's any sort of interest. And here's another one. Um, another comic that it, uh, the Eagle um, assimilated, which was Tiger. So for a while it was Eagle and Tiger. Just so people knew that some of the uh, stories would be uh, would would be present, you know, in the in the issues. And eventually you would go Eagle and Tiger, Eagle and Tiger. 
eagle and tiger and then eventually you get to the point where it was just eagle again um, now the main sort of character the, the most popular character in eagle was Dan Dare um, a good picture of Dan Dare yeah, there you go right there's Dan Dare yeah right um, and that was a sort of like uh, 50s sort of b-movie type character um, who would protect the earth against a whole bunch of different uh, intergalactic enemies and things like that um, I have to actually say I'm only sort of enjoying Dan Dare stories now I, I, have, I enjoyed more of the sort of other science fiction stuff and horror based stuff in, in the ego um, there we go, that's the two different Dan Dares because there was Dan Dare and then there was like his sort of great 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 grandson or something like that um, alright so I think we can let's, we can get past that, alright so going on to later eagles, these are the ones that were actually mine as a kid um, and it started being called the new eagle that's 1990 um, so um, these comics I loved because they had one-off science fiction stories in them just called the one-off and uh, it really made me want to um, write stories that were similar uh, there we go have a bit of that Ghostbusters 2 um, very underrated it's not great but you know it's a lot better than people give it credit for anyway uh, yeah, you can get things like that pics at the back of things <laughs> yeah great uh, so one one um, one story in particular that I liked was uh, hold on actually let's take a look inside one of the issues that I've got. This one's from June 1990. Um, now, there's Dan Dare. By this time, most of the most of the artwork was all in colour. But the funny thing is, some of the, the, the actual drawings aren't as good as the, the earlier versions in places. Not all the time, but sometimes. Again, it's quite funny to look at all this stuff from, like, uh, from like you know the eighties and and nineties. Um, so this is Computer Warrior, right? Which was one of my favourite uh, strips, and it was about um, a kid who would be tested by entering into his computer, a bit like Tron, and he would then. Uh, have to like defeat certain computer games. It was normally, I think, if I remember, it was like US Gold. So it was like things like uh, what was the name of the game, Black Tiger, and, and things like. But it was real games. It was actual games that you could buy in the shop. So it was a really awesome tie-in, and it went, it went, it went for ages. Um, you know, uh, promoting them. Um, one writer's view of the future. I won't bother reading that. Uh, I had that. If you'll notice there, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles in Britain because we weren't allowed to say Ninja. Uh, I don't know, this is some sort of... Some sort of poster. But anyway, so this is the this is the one-off story. This is one one-off story that I was talking about. Um, and it would just, you know, this one, I'm trying to remember this one, Dimension Ripper. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what this one's about. Obviously ripping through dimensions, but the science fiction stories were always really, really great. And that was what I looked forward to, you know, the most. Um, Ghost World, that might be from Scream. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, so I just loved the, the eagle. I didn't love cricket though. I don't know why that's in the back of that. Right, and finally you had, I've got a Dan Dare holiday special there. That was from 1990. But here's 
where I preferred the Eagle was when it was the Eagle Monthly. Now the Eagle Monthly was um, the last throw of the dice for the Eagle, unfortunately. Uh, it lasted for a couple of years, but um, really, you know, the Eagle had always been like a weekly comic. Uh, and by this time, sales had dipped so much that they, they were only releasing it uh, monthly. I think there was a while when they were releasing weekly and monthly at the same time, but eventually only monthly. Um, so we can see here uh, that they've went back to some of the black and white artwork. This is the 13th floor again from, from Scream. Uh, I think I'm right in saying that... Um, I just love some of the black and white artwork on this, you know. It's awesome. I do apologise, this is all out of focus. Uh, this is actually, so the, the stories were much longer because it was monthly, but you know, it was a much sort of bulkier comic. Charlie's War, I don't, I think that came from another comic. Um, I think that may have come from when the Eagle assimilated another comic, maybe Tiger or... I don't know if it, if it, I don't know if it ever did Commando or anything like that, I'm not sure. Shadow, I don't really remember that. Oh, it said New Story, what do I? Um, there's Dan Dare, there's some cool toys. Uh, and the thing is, I used to, oh, here's another Computer Warrior Space Attack, I don't remember that game. Uh, I don't remember that. <laughs> Mouser, the priceless puss, and his enemy, James the Butler. <laughs> uh, sounds like they're trying to do a bit of the Beano there. Stormforce, uh, that was a good one. Uh, sort of science fiction esque. Uh, guys get like a gun for like, an arm, like uh, just like Cobra. Alan, if you're watching this, just like Cobra. Uh, yeah, so the stories were really, you were really getting your best sort of bang for your buck. And here's the, um, the one-off story again. This one's like A Taste of Terror. This one's like uh, sort of science fiction horror. Uh, oh, that's people sending in their, their own drawings. I probably did that, to be honest. I don't remember, but I probably did. Uh, Doom Lord again. If you actually see here, you see Doom Lords, that's actually someone in a mask and early Eagle comics actually had like photo strips where they were just like taking pictures rather than actually drawings. I, I, I wasn't a fan of that, I much prefer the, the artwork. Um, see, you can see Doom Lord there sort of changing. Because he can do that, because he's Doom Lord. Uh, actually there's two, two Doom Lord. My god, there's loads of Doom Lord. Um, and there's a roller coaster for you, the corkscrew, where's that, Open Towers. So that's really my Eagle collection, it's not massive, but I've started a, a, an, an inventory of it, um, and uh, I probably should come back to you. I've started an inventory of it and I'm, I'm going to do like, genuinely, it's going to be a long term project, but I'm going to try and collect like every issue of the Eagle, at least the... 1982 to 1994 ones, that would be 574 issues. So, uh, try to collect them, and I'm also going to collect the entire collection of Scream comics. There's only 15 issues and a few specials. Um, the problem with that is that they're actually quite pricey, so I'll need to uh, save up my pennies for that. But it's not something, that I'm not like an ardent collector or anything like that, but it is something that I enjoy. Just occasionally I'll pick up another uh, another comic off of eBay or something like that and it is really just the stuff that I had as a kid that I'm sort of mostly interested in so if you don't know what the eagle is I would definitely go and check it out there's some fantastic uh, artwork in it there's some amazing stories and a lot of the comic book artists who are successful now were actually influenced heavily by the eagle um, so I would definitely check it out and uh, yes I am a geek <laughs>